Hi, my name is Patrick, and I'd like to give you an overview of how to play this game called Mammals vs. Others. This can be played by between three and nine players, and is a fun way for students to learn about the animal classification system. Here you can see we have the game board, a scoring token, a brief overview for how the classification cards can be played. Here we have the classification cards deck, as well as the Mammals and the Others cards. At the beginning of the game, you need to draw out as many from these decks, as many cards as there are total players in a two to one ratio. So for example, if there's three players total, you'll draw two from here and one from here, and then shuffle them up and then deal them out one to each player. If you had six players total, you would make sure that you had four total from the others deck and two total from the mammals deck. Again, then shuffling them together and then dealing them out, one to each player, and players will keep those closed in their hands, not revealing which team that they are on, until they have an opportunity to play one of these cards during the course of the round. After drawing these cards and delivering them to the different players, then you won't need to draw from these later. This is the main deck that you'll draw from, of the classification cards. Each player will take three cards from here and hold them in their hand, and then during the course of the game, they will play one card face up on the board, and then after playing that, draw one card to replenish it in their hand. The round is over when either the Mammal team successfully completes their mission by being able to place one of their cards, the Mammal cards, on the board, or when the cards are exhausted from the draw pile. Let me show you how the cards can be played. People will take turns playing one card at a time, but the first player has to place a card that has Phylum written on the center of it at this edge of the board. Then from there, players can build out either by placing another card that has Phylum written on it here, or they can build onto this. In this case, the next player might choose to build onto this one, creating a chain. Here's how you need to look at it. On the edge of this is written either Phylum or Class. Cards that have either of that written on the center in the white space may be placed bordering this. And vice versa, this card can only be placed next to a card that has either Phylum or Subphylum written in the center. As you can see here, this card is Phylum, matches the Phylum here, and the Phylum here matches the Phylum here. So we're able to build on these together. The next card that I could play out goes, yeah, you can build in any direction. I could have placed this here or here. That depends on the strategy as the game develops. But you can see that the Cordata written here on the edge matches the Cordata written here in the center. And the subphylum written on the edge here matches the subphylum written here on the center. Then also, perhaps the next player might be able to finish out this mission by playing one of their other's cards. This would be able to be played because the vertebrata here matches this written in the center, and the class written here on the edge matches this written on the center there. At that point, they would score the total number of cards in the chain, taking the most direct route possible, and mark that on the edge of the board. Other cards may be in the chain. For instance, this could have been played as well. This would match on this edge. The subphylum matches this written here. And the class, excuse me, the cordata matches that there. You have to pay careful attention to what's written on the card. It's going to be easy to get confused. Here's how, so this would be a completed mission for the others team. The game will keep on going, however, until either the Mammals team completes one of their missions, or again, the cards are completed or completely exhausted from the deck. Here's how a Mammals mission could be completed. <clears throat> again, the same rules apply. Class or Chordata, we see the Chordata matches that. Phylum, Subphylum, we see the Subphylum matches that. They wouldn't be able to play this here because the edges don't match onto this one, but they could play this card here seeing how the vertebrata matches this written in the center and the class matches written this written in the center. Class, class, vertebrata, vertebrata. Then they would have the potential to finish out by playing their mammals card, their mission card, completing that. Here you can see order, order, mammals, mammals. There's a set score for the mammals. You get 15 points for your team. And at the end of the round, which again ends either when the Mammals card is played or the deck is exhausted, you count up the total points for each team and then divide it by the number of players. So for instance, if there were two on the Mammals team, they would divide the 15 points in half. 
marking that on the score sheet to keep track of over the course of the three rounds. And also the others team, as they're keeping track of their score, as they complete missions going through the course of the round, they would then divide their total by the total number of players that they have on their team as well. This will go on for three total rounds, at which point each player will divide up the total, will add up the total number of points that they have, and the winner will be declared. At the beginning of the second and the third rounds, you need to do the same thing as you did at the start of the first, with the mammals and the other cards. Take the same number of cards total as there are players, the two to one ratio of others to mammals, and divide them out. So players may find that they're on either the mammals or the others cards, then that could vary over the course of the game. And, as is usually the case, the player with the most points wins. I hope that's a help, and I hope you have fun playing. Thanks for listening.